Now, electrocardiograms, EKGs, or if you prefer ECGs, whatever makes you happy. We can use these clinically to examine if your ticker is ticking like it should be. Okay, we can examine the health of your heart. So we can graph the electrical activity occurring in your cardiac muscle cells okay, over a certain period of time. So you'll notice that we've got some waves, we've got some peaks, we've got some valleys, we've got um, intervals and segments and complexes. We've got all kinds of things going on. So let's make sure we know what we are talking about. So electrical changes um, are called waves. Okay, so a P wave, a QRS wave, a T wave. Okay? These show changes in electrical activity. Okay? So something has changed electrically. Okay? If there was no difference, you do see these little um, flat lines. Okay? So if we see a positive wave, okay? this indicates that um, impulses are moving towards the electrodes that we have placed on your body. So if you've ever um, had an EKG, seen somebody have an EKG, um, watched Grey's Anatomy and had somebody have an EKG, you know that they put these electrodes on um, your chest and all over your certain places on your body. This is what we're talking about. Those are the electrodes. Now a negative, a downward spike, and you see we do have two of those. Okay. Now these nerve impulses are moving away from the electrodes. Okay. The flat lines or the isoelectric lines, these are your base lines. Um, and then what are, we, what are we doing with all of this information? Okay, so we said we can examine um, the health of your heart, okay? um, if it looks like this every time. And as long as it's not super fast or super slow, then we know, hey, your heart is doing what it's supposed to do. But if this looks a little different, or if it is extra slow or extra fast, um, we can use that as a diagnostic tool to realize that something isn't quite right. So any kind of disturbance in the electrical rhythm, we call those either dysrhythmias or arrhythmias, and both of those are cause for concern. All right, <clears throat> your EKG recordings. Um, we've usually got five waves to talk about, um, and we really combine three of those into one. And these represent um, depolarizations and repolarizations of the heart. So depolarization, okay, remember we are opening sodium uh, channels. We are um, going from that resting membrane potential. We're shooting up um, and then repolarization. We're talking about now those potassium and those calcium channels. We are moving back down towards resting membrane potential. Okay, so P wave is our first wave. Atrial depolarization, okay? So we have fired our SA node. It has spread throughout the atria and we get atrial depolarization. Okay, we are depolarizing our atria. Mm -hmm. Then you, you will notice that we have this special complex, QRS complex, okay? So we have five waves total, P, Q, R, S, T, Q, R, S, we just kind of group them together. This is ventricular depolarization. Okay. So we have successfully depolarized your atria during the P wave. Okay. It should make sense that next comes the ventricular depolarization. Okay. We are doing this in response to your AV node firing now. Okay. So that signal is moved from the SA node. It's spread through the atria. It has now hit the AV node. While you are depolarizing your ventricles, okay, your atria get to actually contract. Okay. So remember, depolarization is really just sending the message that it's time to contract. Okay. So atrial depolarization, we're sending the message out to the atria. Okay. We've spread the message in the atria. QRS, we have now started to spread the message in the ventricles. While we are spreading the message in the ventricles, your atria get to actually contract. And they actually go ahead and start repolarizing as well. This portion, the atrial contraction and atrial repolarization, 
Um, they say that it's quote unquote hidden behind the QRS wave. You'll notice that this is a really tall wave, okay? And your atria um, really, we haven't seen um, quite a spike. And so if we kind of try to put this over here as well, it's just really gonna be hidden by your QRS complex. Now, after this is finished, okay, we move on to the T wave, which is ventricular repolarization. Um, your ventricles, if they're repolarizing, that also means that they have already contracted and are going ahead and returning to their resting potential as well. Okay, so we are depolarizing your atria, we are depolarizing your ventricles, and we are contracting your atria, and then we start to contract your ventricles, and then we get to depolarize your ventricles. So there's a lot going on here. Okay, there's a lot going on here. Now, since um, the EKGs are measuring your electrical activity over a certain period of time. You're not just going to see one of these. You're going to have consecutive ones. Okay. Um, we can also use these intervals to determine if your heart is functioning as it should. Okay. So intervals okay, and we have segments and they're going to kind of teach us different things here. Okay, so your intervals um, include at least um, one component of a wave. Segments do not include any wave components. So intervals. You have an R to R interval, a P to R interval, and a Q to T interval. Okay, and you can see our drawings here, what we're talking about. Okay. An R to R interval is the time between two successive R waves, so an R to an R, that should make sense. Okay. This represents an entire generation spread of an action potential okay, through the heart, so both the atria and the ventricles. We can use this to measure your heart rate. So we can count R to R intervals over a specific length of time and we can use that to calculate your beats per minute, okay, your heart rate. Now, a P to R interval, okay. beginning of the P wave to the beginning of the R wave. This is the amount of time it takes for depolarization to spread through the atria, okay. This also includes the AV node delay. And then we have our QT interval, okay, beginning of the QRS complex through the end of the T wave. This is how long it takes for action potential to spread through the ventricular um, chambers and get a ventricular contraction as well. Now we mentioned segments also, we have an ST segment, okay, so the beginning of the S wave to the beginning, or, or excuse me, end of the S, the beginning of the T. Okay. This is one of those flatlined periods. This is the plateau phase of the ventricles. There is no net change electrically. Okay. Remember, we are prolonging depolarization here. We are not furthering um, any membrane potential change. If this is not a flat line, okay, if it is elevated or if it is depressed, um, this can be a sign of some clinical conditions, perhaps um, myocardial uh, infarctions, heart attacks, um, or ischemia, things like that. All right, um, so just one last time, we've talked about atrial depolarization, We've talked about ventricular depolarization and atrial contraction. We've also got ventricular contraction and ventricular depolarization also. Okay. We said our R to R intervals can be used to measure our heart rate, okay. um, and so forth and so on. So make sure you take a look at that. This is one of the more difficult topics okay, that we cover in the cardiovascular system. It just takes a little bit of practice. Now,
we are very quickly, very briefly, going to mention how to um, interpret an EKG as far as measuring your heart rate. So we said that an R to an R wave can be used to determine your number of heartbeats per minute. Okay. Um, one R to R wave, the average time should be approximately 0.8 seconds. Okay. So each heartbeat should be about 0.8 seconds. Okay. So how do we come up with that number? We estimate how many big boxes. Okay, so you'll notice that we've got big boxes, big boxes, big boxes. And then we've got little boxes, little boxes. Okay, so if we estimate the number of big boxes, okay, between your R waves, okay, then each of the big boxes is 0.2 seconds. Okay, so we should see. One, two, three, and our next R would be here, approximately. Okay, so that will give us our 0.8 seconds. Okay, so again, each big box, here we go up here, each big box is 0.2 seconds. Okay, and we said the average time between R to R peaks should take about four of these. One, two, three, four. Now, we don't have another R here to measure exactly. Okay. So we are just kind of providing you information here. Okay, we're not really asking you to uh, do any math on this particular graph, because again, we don't have another R wave to really compare to. So we are just telling you, okay, that you should be counting the number of big boxes between your R to R. Each big box is 0.2 seconds. Okay, on average, each heart rate should be 0.8, so you should see four of those big boxes between. Okay. Now, there are a couple of instances where each EKGs um, can very quickly help us determine what's going wrong inside of your heart. The first one, um, basically a flat line, so known as asystole. Um, you have no cardiac electrical activity, which is um, not good. Um, if your heart is not electrically active, um, it's uh, not really beating. And if your heart's not really beating, then you're not really able to stay alive. So within about 15 minutes, if we can't get your heart going, um, you're dead. Okay, your brain is dead within 15 minutes, and that's probably um, sometimes a little longer, okay, than we would normally think of. Really need your heart to uh, just continue to pump. So if we end up with a systole, we're going to give you epinephrine um, to see if we can jump start it. Or if you happen to be on an operating table and we can crack your chest open, we can do a heart massage as well. Third degree heart block, um, your SA node. The impulses coming from your SA node are not reaching um, the ventricles because it is blocked somewhere. The AV node has been blocked. So there is no longer a good relationship between the timing of your P wave and your QRS wave. Um, so remember your P wave is your atrial depolarization. Your QRS wave should be your ventricular depolarization. But that signal is not getting there like it should because of this block. So you notice there's this huge gap and then these little P waves are just not really making a whole lot of sense. Ventricular tachycardia or VTAC, your SA node is no longer in control like it should be. Um, if this continues, um, this could be life-threatening, could lead to ventricular fibrillation, which we'll talk about um, next, could lead to asystole, which we just talked about um, a second ago, or could lead to death. There's um, really, this just looks like um, like shark's teeth or something, y'all. Like this doesn't really resemble anything of our QRS that we just talked about a little bit ago. So this is not good. 
ventricular fibrillation or V-fib, now your ventricles um, are not contracting in a coordinated fashion. Um, this it, it happens commonly in cardiac arrest patients. There's really no longer any measurable waves or complexes, so we don't have that QRS complex anymore. You can't really tell where, which ones of these would pass as a P wave or anything like that. So this um, is not good either. And then we have atrial flutter. Your atria are going to contract rapidly. This could turn into atrial fibrillation, which we'll talk about next. Um, they say this has a sawtoothed appearance. Um, so if you think of like a handsaw or something, I guess these look like teeth. Um, the atrial rhythm um, is regular if your AV node conducts your impulses in a consistent manner. Um, atrial rate is 200 to, excuse me, 250 to 350 beats per minute, um, while the ventricular rhythm is usually regular. So that's kind of weird. So your atria have lost their minds. They are just um, running sprints, and your ventricles are like, oh, I'm good. I'm just going to continue to beat at my nice normal rhythm. Um, so this is bad because it could lead to atrial fibrillation or fib fibrillation that's hard to say um so <laughs> again these all just look kind of weird right so these tells your doctor like immediately and I'm like well that's that's wrong that's something bad so we have irregular contractions and irregular patterns um so these are not spaced out equally like they should be um, and then they don't exactly look like they should either. So normally we didn't see all of all of these hills, all of these waves. Okay, we had a P wave. Um, I don't really know where our P wave went here. This kind of looks like maybe a P wave, um, but um, this just this is just wrong. Okay, your atria, um, they are contracting so quickly that they're basically just quivering. Um, could exceed 350 beats per minute. Um, your ventricles may or may not have control for them either. So one thing we haven't really talked about is um, the overall function of your atria and your ventricles. Your atria, their job is to basically fill with blood and then your ventricles are basically um, supposed to pump that blood either out to your lungs or out to your body. So if your atria are beating this quickly, it's really hard to fill with blood like it's supposed to. Um, your ventricles, if they are, even if they are beating rhythmically like they are supposed to, um, they may not actually be getting a whole lot of blood coming from the atria anyway, and so they aren't able to pump blood out to your body quite like you are supposed to. Um, and so I think it is safe to say that um, none of these are very good for you, and all of these are cause for concern. Um, so this is just a recap slide, so you can compare all three, or all three, all, uh, all five of them, side by side. And just take a look at these um, descriptions one more time, just to kind of familiarize yourselves with some of the, um, some of the options here.